Well, here on my channel, I tested a bunch of different world vacuums. I really like to showcase how good these world vacuums can navigate various objects. So, of course, I put a bunch of random objects on the ground in the middle of my hallway. And you know, this is a typical robot master's hallway with a bunch of random objects. But it looks like this robot vacuum sped up, doesn't want to do this navigation challenge, and it's taking an alternate route, which is very unusual. Most of you robot vacuums will attempt this uh, navigation challenge. But let's see what's going up here. Well, hello, 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 my favorite YouTube peeps. How's it going? It's Nathan here, Royal Masters. Thanks so much for stopping by and watching this cool video. So today in front of me, I got the 360 S5 and a huge shout out to 360 for sending me out this robot in exchange for review. You guys are awesome. And before we begin, make sure you hit this like pillow right there. It really does help out the video, helps out the channel, and it means the world to me. Okay, so in this video, we're going to talk about the 360 S5. I did some cleaning challenges. I did a navigation challenge, and we'll see if this is right for you. And one thing to remember is this guy is priced around $199. So it's actually a pretty good deal for a lot of base for a vacuum. Uh, not a lot of vacuums in this price point offers via navigation. All right, let's see what the 360 S5 is all about. Okay, so the first thing I did was a navigation challenge. I did two types of challenges. I did one with like water bottles, and I had it go to a target point. And I felt like this S5 did a really good job. And in the beginning of the video, you notice that the world well, vacuum took an alternate route. I was actually shocked by that. Usually these world well, vacuums will try to go through the challenge. So I had to get smart, close the door, and finally the S5 went through it without any issues. I think it hit one bottle, but I think despite having this front-facing uh, 3D technology, it was able to recognize most of the objects in that challenge. So no gripes about that. Also, my next clean challenge, I took some random teddy bears. I know having teddy bears in the middle of a kitchen is completely normal. But this is really just to show how well the optical avoidance is. And it relies on its 360 degree scanning laser system to avoid these objects. And during the testing, it was able to go around the objects, effectively clean it. And you may notice towards the end of the challenge, it was able to adjust its cleaning pattern. So if you have it set to clean twice, it would start in one direction and then crisscross in the other direction. So I really like the crisscross pattern. A lot of these world vacuums don't offer that feature. I wish they all did because having a crisscross pattern really helps with the cleaning and being able to get the dirt and debris from multiple angles. Okay, so in a more realistic scenario, I took this guy in my office area and had this guy go around my chair legs, my table, and you can see that the world vacuum is pretty good. It was able to get under most of the areas. Now, like the wooden chair leg area, like with the pretty tight, the world vacuum did not try to go under there, so it left some dirt and debris. So this isn't the most aggressive world vacuum. I have seen world vacuums that are very aggressive, and there's kind of like a fine line between being too aggressive and not being aggressive enough. But that brings me into my next point. Okay, so let's go ahead and look into the app. I'm going to show you a couple highlighted features I found. So I'll go ahead and bring in my uh, smartphone here. So this guy does support Android or uh, iPhone. This is the Galaxy Z Fold 2, but you can basically use any uh, Android device. So let's go ahead and jump into the 360 robot application. And it's very similar to most of these uh, robot vacuum applications you probably all uh, know about. So I won't go too into depth into the application. But you can see that there's the main map there. It's, it's broken down into rooms. And you all have your uh, like smart toggles right here. And also you have the uh, feet squared. You have the minutes. And you also have the estimated uh, area of this map. So that's really cool. You can also change this to uh, metric as well if you like the uh, meter squared. Okay, so let me show you the highlighted features here. Uh, before we do that, I really like this uh, layout where it gives you all the permanent information right there. And here's where your multi-story uh, map management is. You can save up to 10 floor plans. And it's really easy to rename the floor plan, delete the floor plan, save it with the little heart icon, and use it. I really like this. Uh, 360 really has a good implementation on the multi-map saving. All right, so for my last demonstration, you notice that the 360 S5 was pretty gentle around the objects, as long as the LiDAR sensor was able to pick up the objects. Now, for this demonstration, you notice that this represents like a bed frame or something, where you have a sheet hanging down to the floor. And most of these world vacuums that use LiDAR won't be able to go through it because it faces an object. But 360 decided to solve that issue by offering an anti-collision toggle. So if I disable this, now the world vacuum is going to kind of be more aggressive and see if we can get through this uh, bed sheet here. All right, let's go and see if this feature works.
happened to Science here, I'll show you the anti-collision, which I talked about uh, a few minutes ago. So yes, you can enable that if you want the world vacuum to be a little bit less aggressive and to kind of avoid the objects. Now, if you have like low-hanging uh, bedroom curtains or like the sheets, uh, disable that and the world vacuum will try to get underneath the bed frames and stuff. But let's go and jump into the um, scheduling feature. This is something that a lot of these budget-friendly world vacuums don't offer is the ability to select the room and have it clean. Also, you can uh, set uh, power levels as well. So there's actually four different power levels on this guy, so um, it's really nice. And I felt like this guy wasn't too loud. I believe it's around 60 decibels, but I'll show you that right now so you guys can hear how loud the world vacuum is. Okay, so we're back, and now let's keep on going here. So let's go and now jump into the clean schedule. You can see you can change it, and this is done in military time. You also can clean once. You can uh, do weekend. You can customize weekday. So that's nothing new with scheduling, but here's where you can do areas. That's something I haven't seen on World of Vacuums for the most part is being able to clean a certain area. So, for example, in the morning after your dog Fluffy eats uh, their food, you can actually have the World of Vacuum uh, go around that doggy bowl area and just clean up so that's a really nice touch and you also have room cleaning and within these rooms like i said you can actually uh, specify certain power levels as well so this is really nice i really like the fact that 360 spent the time to add all the core uh, features you might want in a raw vacuum and not really add any additional unnecessary features okay so yes i do like this other feature uh, this is a rotate map, so you can actually rotate the map to your preferred uh, orientation or layout. So this is a handy feature, and I've tested a bunch of world vacuums, and I think only two or three other world vacuums have this capability, so that's really cool. Um, so everything else is uh, very similar. You have voice, uh, you can change the language, you have RC mode, you can update the robot. So despite this low price point, the 360 S5 offers a lot of features. Okay, let's go and uh, keep going here. All right, let's see how much the S5 can actually pick up. We'll bring out my trusty scale here, turn it on, and we'll lay out the dry rate of the dustbin. And I do like to break in the filters, so the filter's been used, the extractor bars, all that goodness. All right, so we're at 6.655 ounces, and we're going to put in about 3 ounces of uh, rice. Okay, up top there's three toggles. You got room, house, and area. Let's go and use area for this demonstration. Unfortunately, you can't zoom in on the map to make it a little bit easier to set up your area select, but with that green, uh, Square there, you can make it a rectangle or square. I just kind of highlight over the area you want the robot vacuum to clean. And off to the right there, you got two toggles. Uh, you can add another area, or you can have it clean uh, more than once, do it twice. And once you've got everything set up, uh, at the bottom there, you do have the vacuum level. Let's go and make it max mode, and we'll see how well can uh, clean this rice on the floor. So it could definitely be a daunting task when choosing the right world of vacuum for you. There's so many different features out there, so many different models from different companies. So I'm here to help you. So if you have any questions, feel free to comment down below. I'll be more than happy to answer your questions. Or you can reach me via email at nate2003 at comcast.net. So me personally, I look into the price. I look at the features. Also, I look at the cleaning ability, the world of vacuums. There's a bunch of videos out there that help showcase that. Also, I try to look at my floor plan. Am I a pet owner? Do I have a lot of pet hair? Some world of vacuums do better than others in this category. Also, if you're looking into more advanced world of vacuums, they definitely have optical recognition and some additional features that you may be interested in. Okay, so here's a look at uh, the clean results. You notice that there's still a little bit of rice right there. Um, let me check the carpets here. Seems like you actually did a good job. I don't feel a lot of rice there. And check over here. You can see that there's some rice under this lip here. So I would think that the side brush would be able to get that, but it got most of the rice in the corner, but kind of pushed it near the docking station. And since the robot leaves a gap, there's some debris that's going to be expected. So my 
best uh, suggestion is to put the docking station in an area where uh, you don't mind having some dirt accumulation and you can just clean this off later. But let's go ahead and uh, check the weight of the dustbin and we'll see how much it actually picked up. So it looks like it picked up 2.84 ounces from the original dry weight of the dustbin. Uh, that's not too bad. So if I did that in my head, uh, it's about 95% as I calculated out beforehand. So next, uh, let's just talk about what's included in the box. Uh, you got your nice docking station. I do try to read other people's posts and look at other people's videos. And a couple users say that this docking station, uh, sometimes the little vacuums will get disconnected. Uh, for my personal testing, I have tested other 360 models. I haven't experienced this that use this type of style. Uh, maybe it's just the way the docking station is up against the wall. Make sure it's against a flat surface because this whole surface is flat and it's kind of like up against like a, uh, what do you call this, 45 degree angle. So if the docking station is like this or if it's kind of like offset, yes, I would think that the little vacuum would uh, get disconnected. So that's just my uh, take on it is make sure this docking station is nice and flush to the wall. Also, I like the fact that you can wrap the cable around so it makes it a really nice cleanup right there. And also with this uh, power adapter, you press this button right here, you can actually uh, change out the prong adapters. So I know a lot of people won't be traveling with the robots overseas, but maybe if you're going to resell the robot, it's kind of a nice uh, uh, thing to have. You can just don't have to worry about if it's going to be compatible with a different country. Okay, so you also have a bunch of manuals here. You got my... Uh, application quick start guide. I like these because it makes it really easy just to take your smartphone, scan it, and just keep on, uh, get going right away. Also, my favorite is the quick start guide. So it gives you all the uh, information you need to just get started. Uh, it's really easy to start these robots. Put them on a dock station, press the power button, you can almost press clean, and it'll just start going. Um, now, my least favorite is this giant instruction manual. Look at this thing. This thing is huge. I think 360 purposely uh, made this manual super big just to, you know, get on my nose. But no, in reality, uh, there's multiple languages in this manual, so they should be able to uh, cover um, a lot of countries. And there's a lot of great information, and there's that QR code. So this booklet thing, I'm just going to toss over here. Okay, so let's go and look at the actual design of the 360 S5. I'll go and uh, put you guys close here. So this is a very minimalistic design, nothing too crazy about it. You do have the power button, also acts as a clean button, and then you got your return to home. Now you do have a clickable Domi knobby thingy. That's something that Robot Master just came up with. It's so low-hanging furniture or couches that kind of sag, the Robot Vacuum will have a good chance of being able to escape. Now let's go ahead and open up the flap lid here. And yes, I'll add my sound effect. I know it's craziness. So you do have a uh, Wi-Fi reset right here, and this is a uh, Wi-Fi indicator. So um, when it's paired up, it's going to, uh, let's see if I can turn this guy on, be solid blue. And here's a look at the dustbin. Dust it's a very large dustbin. I believe this guy's around the 500 millimeter, 500 millimeter mark, and it is washable. So this is a very nice dustbin. I was able to collect a lot of dirt and debris in my uh, testings there. And you also have a nice little cleaning tool. Um, so there's a little cutting edge right there to get the hair off the extract bar and there's the bristles to help clean the dirt off the robot. So let's go and uh, look at the uh, side of the robot here. So there's that infrared sensor for docking purposes and off to the right there or yeah the right of the robot you have a edge clean sensor. Uh, I think the side brush isn't speed sensitive, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it was just going one speed. But it did do a good job going on edges and there's the exhaust vent and your charging contacts in the back there. All right, let's go and get this guy flipped over and we'll look underneath the robot. Okay, so this robot's uh, pretty minimalistic. Uh, you got your uh, four clip sensors, so your robot doesn't take a nice trip down the stairs, your front wheel caster. So this is a three-arm side brush, and some users state they like this because it tends to last longer than like the all silicone design. But in my personal uh, experience, I think both the side brushes did a pretty good job and they last a very long time. Here's your large adjustable wheels, and I believe it can get over threshold up to 0.8 inches or 20, uh, millimeter, uh, 20 millimeters. So it's a pretty good threshold height. And let's check out the extractor bar here. Lift up this little cover plate. As you can see, there's a lot of hair wrapped around, but don't worry guys, take your little cleaning tool and just kind of go through it. And you can easily just clean the hair off of this. Makes it really easy to clean the extractor bar. So I don't think it's a huge deal, but that's just something to consider when you're a pet owner. And let's check out the ends here, see if they're removed. So nice 
touches, you can remove the ends to help uh, get the hair off the sides of the extractor bar. So very cool. Okay, so let me give you my final thoughts on the 360 S5 and if I recommend it. So if you're a new world vacuum owner, I do recommend uh, starting with like the 360 S5. It has all the core features you need in the world vacuum. Also, it does support the multi-map saving. And there's not a lot of extra features to overwhelm the user. It has all the features you need. And there's some really nice additional features, like having uh, the ability to pre-select uh, vacuum levels in each of the given rooms. You can name the rooms, all that stuff. Um, also, the navigation is pretty good. It's not the best out there, but for the $199 price point, I think it's one of the best out there for the category. So I don't have any complaints about the navigation. Um, so if you're looking for a good secondary world vacuum, the 360 S5 is good. You could also probably use this as your primary world vacuum. But if you're someone that wants the latest and greatest, well, you might have to look elsewhere. And this guy does not have mopping, so that's just something to consider. There's no mopping plate on this guy, but a lot of users just want a vacuuming robot. And if I didn't mention, this thing does have carpet boost. So if you go around carpeted areas, um, this guy will boost up its suction if it's not on its max suction. Alright, so I want to give a, a huge shout out to you guys. You guys are awesome. Make this channel possible. You guys don't know how much you guys mean to me. And thanks so much for watching this video. You guys have a great rest of the day. Like and subscribe. And if you're interested in this guy, there's the links down below. Alright, catch you later. Be safe out there. Bye.